Welcome to my 2023 gaming setup tour. In this video, I'm going to be going over everything that I have in my gaming setup, which the total cost ended up being around $10,000. The goal of this video is to give you guys inspiration and ideas for your gaming setups. Without further ado, let's get started. The desk. Everything you're seeing right here is actually from Ikea when it comes to the desk structure. To hold the desktop, I'm actually using two Alex drawers. I do remember when these things used to cost $90, they're like $140 now. And the tabletop is a 96 inch long tabletop from Ikea that's named Carbly and it costs around $290. I really like the way it looks and feels and it's so much space that I never feel crowded. Now a lot of people worry about these tabletops bending, but in my case I ended up just using a metal bracket, actually three of them, and mounted them to the wall right under and six months later they're still holding holding up pretty well. So far, I haven't noticed any bends in this tabletop, which is good. The PC. Let's talk about the specs. This PC has a 16 core Intel 3900K, which is a blazing fast CPU for gaming and coding, an RTX 4070, 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM running at 3600 megahertz per second, two terabytes of M.2 SSD, and the NZXT Kraken Z73 360 millimeter AIO. And for the motherboard, it's the NZXT Z690 motherboard. And for the case is the NZXT H9 Elite. And for cooling, we have 10 thermal take ARGB fans. This PC is perfectly balanced for what I needed to do. It has a very very powerful CPU which will give me zero hiccups when I put it under load whether it's coding or gaming. The monitors. The main monitor is a Pixio 34 inch monitor which is a very budget friendly monitor that is 3440 by 1440p pushing 165 hertz at 1ms response time. I will be upgrading this monitor soon. I really want to get one of those LG OLED curve monitors, the 45 inch one. They look really good. And my second monitor is a curved 32 inch NZXT monitor that is also 165 hertz at 1ms response time. This used to be my main monitor in my previous setup, but ever since I got the ultra wide, I use this one as a vertical monitor, which is super useful for coding or even having multiple apps open at the same time stacked on top of each other. Thank you Windows 11 for making that an easy feature to use. Cable management. Whether you agree or not, cable management is one of those annoying things that all of us gamers with gaming setup have to do that will for sure take our gaming setup to the next level and it's always so important to me whenever I build a gaming setup. So for this setup, my goal is very simple. Whenever you're looking at this gaming setup, up from an eye level, I do not want you to see any cables. And for that, I use Raceways, double-sided tape, and the old trick in the book, hide the cables behind things. All the cables that are running are running in these Raceways that I bought off of Amazon. The nice thing about these Raceways, they have holes on each side, so you can route the cables out anytime you need them out of the Raceway. They cost $20, and they're super, super useful. All the access cable is actually hiding behind the Alex drawer, which is embarrassing. Now, you might be wondering, why is there no cables under the monitor? To make that possible, I ran a Raceway behind one of the speakers and ran a power strip behind there and everything that uses power like the monitor and the lights above are plugged into that power strip and that way when you look at the setup there is no cables under the monitor which makes it look super nice. Accessories and peripherals. First let's cover this light that is on the monitor. This is called the screen bar halo by BingQ. It costs $150 and it's one of those things that are nice to have but not must to have. This light has two purposes. Purpose number one is it helps my eye with eye strain after you have used the setup for all day long. Just having a consistent light happening in front of your eyes helps a lot. And number two, it shines a light on your desk so you can see your keyboard, your mouse, and everything much better, and it also adds a nice aesthetic. I do notice myself, I use that light every single day when I'm on my setup, which obviously means I really like it. Now for my keyboard, I switch my keyboard every other week since I review a lot of keyboards for brands, but this one is the High Ground Opal Clear Silent Switches keyboard, which looks and feels really good. Now for the mouse, this is the Pulsar X2 Random Frank P Edition. This is by far one of my favorite mice to use. It's very balanced and the battery life is incredible. Now for audio, when I'm gaming, I use the Razer Shark Pro V2 headphones in white. And when I'm just listening to music, I actually use these Angry Meow Cyber Blades. Really expensive earbuds, but they're super, super high quality with noise canceling. And the nice thing is I can use them on my phone, take them away with me. And when I'm not using them, I can just put them in this puck and use them on my PC. They also have RGB, so they add FPS, obviously. And when I just want to listen to music without any headphones, I use these Edifier MR4 studio speakers that cost $129. They're not the high highest quality, but they do the job. For a microphone, I use the Beacon mic. It comes in white, which matches the setup, and it's a dynamic microphone, which will eliminate a lot of the noises around me. And it's mounted to an Elgato low-profile boom arm that I sprayed, painted it white myself. And a couple more things that I use in this desk. This right here is the Beacon Mix Create, which basically allows me to have a multiple digital output sources. In more simple words, it allows me to control the game audio, the chat audio, the music audio, the Discord audio, all in separate channels with these dials on it. And I can actually mute each source individually 
individually. On the left side under the monitor, I have Elgato Stream Deck Plus. I don't do any streaming, but I use this to control my music and also control all of my lights to turn them on to turn them off with one button. Speaking of, the lights. Above the monitor, we have the Nano Leaf lines in a set design that looks really good. These lights are incredibly nice and super bright full, a little bit overpriced, but in my opinion, if you care about RGB, these are the way to go. In the middle of the Nano Leaf, we have a 3D clock that I bought off of Amazon for like 15 bucks. It adds a little bit of nice aesthetic, shows the temperature and the date, which is also very nice. On the left and the right side of the setup, we have these lights from a company called Godox. They're the model TL100. These lights are fully RGB tubes and you can change the light to whatever you want it to be. Super nice and you can control them with an actual remote. The chair. Yes, 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 you might give me some crap, but I do use a Secret Lab chair and no, it is not overhyped. When I first got the Secret Lab chair, I was very skeptical of it. I thought it was going to be a good chair only for looks and not for sitting in. And I've always thought it's really, really expensive for a chair. But my opinion has changed a lot over the last year. I've been using this chair for almost a year now and it feels like day one. It's really comfortable and by the end of the day, nothing hurts in my body. And that's all that matters to me. So in my opinion, if you sit a lot on a desk, this is worth getting. It doesn't have to be this one, it's just any good chair. Now let's move to the final chapter, the decoration. On the right of the setup, we have this IKEA pegboard to make the setup more personalized and custom to me. At the top, we have Give Him Chill sign, which is obviously the name I go by on social media. This neon sign was sent to me by a brand on Etsy and it changes RGB colors, which is nice when I want to change the theme of the setup. Right under that, I have a couple of keyboards hanging and then a katana for some reason. I don't even remember when I got this. I right under here, I actually have one of the first Bibles I've ever received in my life as a gift from somebody. I like to put it on display just to remember those times. To the right of that, we have an IKEA Calyx shelf system, and I mainly added that to make the room feel a little bit more fuller. Anyway, behind the Calyx shelf, we actually have an RGB strip going all the way down around to light up the back of the wall. On top of the shelf, we have three fake IKEA plants and this Lego keyboard that I built myself. And on the right side, I have a couple souvenirs that I kept from going on dates with my wife. Right under that, I have two PlayStation controllers, PS4 controller, and a custom PS5 controller, and they're both sitting on a 3D custom printed stand that my friend printed me. I don't have a 3D printer. Right under there, I have these RGB puck lights that I bought off of Amazon. The nice thing about these lights, they're battery operated, so I don't have to run any cables. And those lights are shining over all the mice that I've accumulated over the years. Yes, I have a lot of them. And the mice are also sitting on custom 3D printed stands. Right below that, we have two keyboards that I built myself, which is also sitting on a 3D custom stand. And what's crazy is this keyboard right here is the first custom keyboard I've ever built three years ago. And that is pretty much everything in my gaming setup if you guys have any questions about anything don't be afraid to drop them down below in the comments i'll respond to everything as much as i can and all the links to all these products will be in the description and that's a wrap thank you guys so much if you've watched this far i truly appreciate it and thank you for watching any of my videos on any social platform because without you guys i wouldn't be able to build any gaming setups like this i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did please drop a like and i will see you guys next time bye bye